thank you for being here with us today. We're really excited that um, you were able to take some time out from your busy schedule in the campaign to talk to us about some of the things that are important to our young professional demographic. Of course, it's very important. Well, um, let's start out with an easy question. Um, it's more in the interest of what young professionals are thinking about when they're developing their careers, um, refining their end goals in life. What were some of the most important personal career decisions you made um, and how did those decisions shape your political aspirations? Well, I have to go back a little bit to my background because I grew up working in my parents' small business growing up. Uh, they sent me off to college knowing that a college education was important uh, for me to earn a living. And I, by the time I was 19 years old, my sophomore year, both my parents had died. So I was really left to make decisions on my own, get myself through college with some loans and scholarships, and figure out how to make my way. Uh, so I, I think I was very uh, concerned when I had a child to make sure she had a college education fund. So the pivotal decision I made is I had an opportunity to invest in national car rental. Uh, and the money that I had, the nest egg, was my daughter's college fund. Knowing what I'd had to go through and putting myself through college, I was hesitant to do that. But I had confidence in myself and our team that we could turn the company around. I invested it and it was the best and the scariest decision that I've ever made in my professional career. I'm sure. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit about infrastructure. So when considering relocating for a job, there's various um, aspects of the community that individuals look for besides just their career. Um, for young professionals, some of those elements um, are just different things that the community has to offer, nightlife activity, music, art and culture. Um, what physical infrastructure elements do you feel are important to attract talented young professionals to Tulsa? Well, I think that's a great question. And as you know, these days, people can work wherever they want to. They can live and, and work in another city, but live in the city of their choice. And so it used to be that people located by railroads or by uh, streams, because that's how our commerce worked. But today, your generation can, can live where you want. And that's really why uh, the BOK Center, One Oak Field, Guthrie Green, uh, the Matthews Building that we purchased, were all important to have dense urban lifestyle uh, to attract the millennial generation to make sure that we had a workforce that not only could help us attract jobs, but I think more importantly, help us create jobs. Uh, so I think that kind of infrastructure that the city and the government seeds the ground for, but then it begins to attract private investment. And when I first started in the mayor's office, as you know, when we left City Hall at night, we were about the last people leaving downtown unless someone was staying at the Hyatt or the downtown Doubletree. Now the sales manager at the downtown Doubletree and the Hyatt tell me that there are about 60 restaurants within walking distance restaurants of all different types and mainly local young entrepreneurs that have launched those. So I think you, we seed the ground and then we listen to you. TY Pros is a, a very important part of, of really the fabric of the voice of our community now to help guide those of us that are in a different generation. Great. So on to environment. Sustainability is key issue for our generation and we care about recycling and reducing our carbon footprint. Um, we want to preserve those resources for many years. Um, that's a very important factor, something that in Thai Pros, we have a great uh, sustainability crew that works for that. Um, what actions can the city take to make sure that we're making good decisions for our environment? Well, I appointed the first director of sustainability at City Hall, and in fact, when I first came to City Hall and I talked to the management team about making City Hall more sustainable and making our government more sustainable, I said, I wanna make this city more green. And I think they were gonna go get me a bucket of paint. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, we had an education process and began to make decisions uh, about city bids and contracts. We brought in the first CNG trash truck. Mm -hmm. uh, we began to look at converting buses. Uh, and we, in fact, repurposing the city buildings that we moved out of when we reduced government's footprint by moving into one technology center was an important part of really our sustainability efforts. We need to be the leaders in sustainability, uh, always keeping a eye on our pocketbook, but normally these days sustainability efforts actually help us save money, whether it's lighting or better, more efficient use of electricity, we were turning off computers at night. All of those things have a dual purpose. There is a great business case to be made for sustainability, and I think City Hall needs to be the leader in those ways. That's great. 
So Tulsa Young Professionals in the Chamber constantly remind us of the importance of participating in legislative decisions. After all, that's how we help decide what the future of our city is going to be. What's the mayor's role in participating and promoting and engaging the public to be more involved in the political process? I think that's a great question and there are several ways. I think it is very important for uh, the mayor to make sure that people have a voice at the table. I read a study recently that said that your generation believes that you make an impact by volunteering, but not by voting. That needs to change. And you need to know that if you vote, your voice will be at the table to make, to make decisions through, as you know, appointing young people on boards, commissions, and trust authorities where you can have a great impact. I've even thought about the great internship program that you all do with nonprofits, moving that and adding that to the city as well so that board members, young people, can begin to learn about the boards that are making very important financial decisions and environmental decisions like the Tulsa Metropolitan Utilities Authority or the Trash Board. So only 4% of the uh, people aged 18 to 21 voted in the June 11th election wow. and my goal is to do everything I can to change that. But I think people have to have a trust and confidence that their government is transparent and accountable to them and that they'll listen when they call and I believe that's vitally important. That's great. Let's talk a little bit about um, infrastructure again. So in surveys, our members uh, constantly are saying that river development is uh, very important to them. It's a high priority for the city. Um, a full river means development, community development, and um, we'll instill pride in the city. We have a great project that's about to break ground down there, and I know that's beginning to get a lot of um, buzz around the city, but what concrete, tangible action items will you do to get a functioning dam built uh, to replace the zinc dam. Right, so you're right, the gathering place is, is exciting, the, the work that's been done on the river trails, but it's really time to have a focus on water in the river. Now there's been a lot of things done over the last 10 years, I think the original plan was almost 10 years ago, but nowhere can I find the milestones that we have to tackle every single quarter, the amount it's going to cost every single year, so, so Tolsons can get behind what it takes to get water in the river. Now I worked in Oklahoma City as Secretary of Commerce while I watched Oklahoma City not only move their river, but it was a ditch when it started and now it's a river and it has development on all sides with great boating activities. Yeah. So I think it's time to put, get the, the key stakeholders, which would be the cities, the tribes, INCOG, the Corps of Engineers, all at a table and say we want an accountable plan that tells us milestones, time frame, and cost. And then make that available to citizens so they can understand. Right now people are very confused about what it would really take to get water in the river. Can we do it just by dredging? Is it just the zinc dam? How much does the Corps of Engineers need to be involved? We need a solid plan and a time frame and we need to cost that plan out to see if citizens want to invest. That's great. So a little bit on life balance. As you know, Typros hosts Street Cred yes. each year, an initiative that works to, um, under the mantra that when no area of Tulsa is neglected, the entire city benefits. Um, this is a process that the end result um, is not just because we came in and, and worked on it for a weekend, but it's a continual effort with the right. community around it. Um, what specific initiatives will you or would you promote to bridge the needs of our old and young in creating sustainable living communities for a lifetime in Tulsa? Well, first of all, I think Street Cred is an amazing program and it's being, you know, it's being executed. We're seeing the Pearl District now, what amazing changes and I can't wait to uh, hope, hopefully help start the 36th Street North plan that you all put together that was great. But, you know, whether you are a young person that has lived in a community that has a lot of alternate methods of transportation where you don't have to get in your car every single day, or I hear from seniors who say, we're at the point we don't want to drive at night. We want to be able to walk to the grocery store and entertainment venues. That doesn't work for all parts of our city, but there are segments of our city that need high dense environments with alternative forms of transportation, whether that is expanded bike sharing programs, making sure we have sidewalks, zip car type opportunities where you can rent a car for an hour if you need it, and really looking very intensely at our public transportation system. I'm convinced that we need to take a step back on public transportation, 
look at the great work that Jim Wagner has done at NCOG and figure out how today we move forward to give um, public transportation a better, a better voice and a better name in the city. Because now, this, Friday, this summer, every Friday I tried to take, because it was 50 Cent Friday, <laughs> I tried to take the bus uh, to run my errands. And not only was it difficult from that, the time it took, but the most difficult thing was getting the information right? Uh, and figuring out which bus. I ended up making friends actually on the bus who would guide me as to where I would transfer <laughs> to get to where I needed to know. So it's, it's, uh, I think it's a very important thing for all parts of our community. And we are having an aging population and we do want to attract millennials to our community. This is a pivotal piece of that attraction. Great. So on education, I know something that you're very yes. passionate about. Um, in this country, a good education should be the right of every child. Um, however, we know that education can be um, really tough for students throughout the city. It can be a hard challenge um, and it's, it's hard to fund. Mm -hmm. um, when we know that education is a key factor in a long-term professional and financial success for every person, how can the mayor's office ensure that the education received by our children is equal across the city? I think the mayor's office makes a huge impact in education. As you, as you said, it's difficult. 84% of the kids in Tulsa Public Schools live at or below the poverty level. So everything that we can do to help make sure those kids receive a great education, and there are several ways. We did the mayor's mentoring to the MAX program, and Tulsans, when you ask them, they come. As you mm -hmm. know, 500 Tulsans went into the highest risk schools to help keep kids uh, on the track. But we also talked to those students and they said, why do I stay in school? I have no hope of doing anything else. I have no hope of going to college because of my financial circumstances. And so between that and businesses in town saying we don't have a workforce, I was proud to help President Tom McKean and Regent Stuart Price launch Tulsa Achieves, where every kid in Tulsa County gets a two-year college education without having to go into the debt uh, that I did. But there's much more work to be done. We now have reading partners in Tulsa. They need mentors that we need to recruit and the mayor's office has the pulpit to do that. Uh, we have City Year, which I experienced when I was teaching in Boston, which is a mentoring program on steroids, which is <laughs> going to help the kids in our highest risk schools. So we have to change the community dialogue and instead of saying education is not important to the mayor's office, we have to say education is the highest priority because education is economic development. It is how we maintain and grow a vibrant economic environment. Thank you. Um, so diversity is an essential component of a, a successful business, um, school and city. TIPROS focuses on multiple initiatives um, because of our diversity crew and the importance mm -hmm. of that um, for our young professionals. Um, the benefit of multitude of experiences can be seen in every aspect of the community. To what extent is the mayor's duty to ensure that diversity is valued and protected among all the communities in Tulsa? Well, I think it's vital that the mayor's office take leadership. And we again did, as we looked at who was making decisions in our city on boards, commissions, and trust authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the diverse, making sure that we had diversity in terms of age, ethnicity, religious views, political views, because the best decisions are made when there is a broad, diverse voice at the table. As you know, I never want to be surrounded with people who just say yes. What we want to do in this city is have, have every viewpoint and, and also make sure that our city really is welcoming and supportive of, of every viewpoint, that people aren't dismissed simply because they disagree uh, with the mayor or whoever's in charge. So I really applaud the work that, that you all have done with the D2 initiative and the Mosaic initiative, making Tulsa really nationally have a reputation to be a welcoming community. And that needs to continue, not just with boards of commissions and trust authorities, but as we look at the workforce of our city. Great. Um, so let's move on to public safety. Um, the next question is top of mind for the majority of people in any city. Safety is important for everyone, young professionals included. How are you going to make our streets safer? So cities across the nation are tackling the issue of both violent crime and theft from property, all different spectrums of it. And they're doing it by having a very specific plan and using today's technology to not just answer 911 calls, but to make sure that we've got the data to be there in advance to, to educate people as to how we decrease crime and to make sure our police officers have the tools and the staffing that they need to, to deal with crime. And it, it, it's very statistical. We know that, for example, if your home is broken into, that statistically 
others in your neighborhood will have their home broken into. We know that differences as our population changes, we know as the economy changes, crime, uh, as economy goes down, crime increases. We have this data, we need to be able to provide it to our police officers to use. And I also think that as citizens, as Tulsans, we need to demand that our uh, public safety officers are able to communicate with each other. The Sheriff's Department does a great job, Tulsa police officers, Highway Patrol, they all cover the same territory. Let's give them the tools to make that, the, that staffing that they have most effective. So on to health care. Oklahoma ranks low on a multitude of health rankings. Um, additionally, disparity of health care availability throughout the city is discouraging at best. Typros believes all residents should have access to quality health care. How can the mayor's office improve health care outcome for the Tulsa population? Well, I think you, you made a great statement, and that is part of it is about educating people about lifestyle choices, mm -hmm. giving them an opportunity to have sidewalks and trails uh, to, to walk on, uh, giving them access to, like the community gardens initiative that we passed when I was in office, giving them access to great uh, fresh food and vegetables, but then also access to health care. I'm, I'm sure you recall that there was a moment when the OSU Healthcare Center was going to close up downtown and move far south, not on any transit route, where people in this part of the city would have a very difficult accessing health care and St. John's and Hillcrest would have been had their emergency rooms overrun. Right. We raised our hand quickly and aggressively with our partners, uh, Speaker Benj at the state and Governor Henry to make sure that that access to health care stayed. Uh, the Wayman Tisdale Center is making a great impact. Morton, Life Senior Services, the Dr. Dart at the community, City County Health Department. We need to bring those resources together though and leverage them to make sure that we're both providing both education and opportunity for good healthy lifestyle choices and opportunities for health care when people are sick. Great. Well, thank you so much for being us, with us today um, and taking time out of your schedule to talk to us about some important issues for our organization. Um, is there anything else that you would like to address our young professionals? Yes, I'd like to say thank you to Tulsa's Young Professionals for believing in our city, returning, and not only raising your voice, but using your time and talent to make an impact, whether it is street creds or it is D2 or any or the sustainability crew, any of the things that you are doing, they are making an impact in our city. And while my name is on the ballot November 12th, and I hope that you come out and vote, what I really hope is that in the future, you raise your hand to run for office, to be a leader in our city, because I promise you, you will continue to make a difference in the lives of Tulsa, and you'll keep and help us make this city the best place it can be. Thank you.